Djokovic goes the wrong way, and Gardner are going the right way. Yeah, so it's the morning after the defeat uh, to Portugal. A cruel way to lose for the Ghana Black Stars. This morning they had uh, the uh, recovery training session here in Qatar ahead of that game versus South Korea. There's not much time uh, to moon about it. The second round of games have begun and it began with a shock as Iran, yes, Iran beat Wales 2-0. Wales had a red card win Hennessy with that red card and it has led to them losing that game. But the Ghana Black Stars is my focus for today. We'll be talking about the game in general, some of the players I liked, their performance. Others I would want to improve on their game. And looking forward to some of the comments and reactions coming in from first the coach of Ghana, the coach of Portugal, and Cristiano Ronaldo to some of the controversial decisions that are making the rounds on social media. We'll look at all that today. As you just subscribe, if you have not, I click on the notification bell to get more updates. So we'll jump right into it and we'll talk about the Canon Black Stars a recovery training session. This morning at 12 noon uh, local time here in Doha, they had their recovery training session ahead of the game versus South Korea. Not much time to wipe a moan about some of the decisions that the referee made. Uh, you have to move on from there and make sure uh, that uh, Ghana make it to the next round of the competition. There's all to play for. But uh, we have some reactions from the coach and I'm sure you've heard him talk extensively on my second channel. I posted their video on that. The coach Otuado spoke about uh, some of the decisions that were made in the game, some of the decisions that led to Portugal winning it. But then, uh, how long can we keep blaming? For one, I'm tired of hearing of African teams complaining about we almost got it, uh, they did so well, uh, we lost, but we played well. I'm tired of passing such comments on African teams. And looking at the decision of the referees, yes, it was uh, quite biased. Uh, but if you're a Portugal fan, uh, I'm sure one or two things you can also find in terms of our tactics and substitutions. Uh, Otoado has reacted to it. He's not happy with the call from the referee. Obviously, uh, feels that Ronaldo was favoured and it was clear. Why was he given the man of the match? <laughs> Quite a shocking one to me there. Also, the coach of Portugal has also reacted uh, to the game uh, versus Ghana. He feels that he said, uh, the, I think a VAR team had failed the ref. Should I think if VAR team had failed the ref, I should consult VAR, uh, they would have prompted him. I also think Jao Felix was fouled at a point and I expected the ref to check the VAR, uh, but he did it. So I don't think, don't think there was a call VAR would have, that was a call VAR would have been necessary for the ref. Yes, as you know, if it goes in your favor, you tend to defend the decision of VAR. But this morning, the Ghana FA has uh, filed a petition to FIFA uh, concerning the referee. His name is uh, Ismail El Faf. He's the reigning MLS ref of the year. Interesting. The team leadership have petitioned FIFA on the performance of the referee against Portugal uh, following the questionable penalty for Ronaldo and failure to use VAR. It's quite shocking. We thought VAR will eliminate a lot of things here in football in terms of uh, whether the team has a penalty, a goal, an offside. It was so much contentious uh, that VAR needed to come into play and it did not happen. The FA have filed a petition and uh, it, it's now in the works as to whether it will mean that the referee would uh, be removed totally from FIFA games or from the World Cup altogether. We'll have a look at that later on when the results come in after this petition has been filed by the FA. So uh, we look forward to seeing what happens on that front as well. And uh, looking forward to the games, I think uh, yesterday uh, the player that impressed me, considering he was playing his first World Cup game, was Salis Abdul Samed. I liked how he was in midfield. I was, however, not impressed with Thomas Partey. Yes, a lot of people are giving me the slate that Thomas Partey was not playing the same role he plays as he does for Arsenal. I get that, but I felt Partey uh, did not control the midfield as he would have done with Arsenal. Well, yeah, there I go again comparing him to this Arsenal form. It's not the same set of players, it's not the same position, but I felt Partey, uh, I didn't feel him, that's the thing. I didn't feel Partey in that midfield. Probably he was overcrowded, probably he did not uh, find the rhythm he needed for this game, but I think Partey needs to improve in the next game if Ghana want to go far 
He's our best player. He was experienced player in the side. But mind you, this is his first World Cup game. And the party would know very well that South Korea game, we cannot slack in in that respect. We have to make sure that South Korea game, we get all three points. Uh, otherwise, we might kiss the tournament goodbye. So, Thomas Partey, I think he should raise the game a bit. I was also impressed with Ali Duseidu, one of the players uh, who impressed me in this World Cup so far. Ali Duseidu was good and he impressed me a lot here. I also did not like the performance of Lawrence Atiziki. Don't get me wrong, he had his moments in the first half, especially with that Cristiano Ronaldo chance he blocked. He also made some fine saves. It could have been another goal from Cristiano Ronaldo. But Lawrence Atiziki, I think for the Jao Felix goal, came out a bit too early. He has to work on his timing in terms of coming out. But all in all, it was a great performance. Good one from him, a decent one for him. Most of these players playing in their first World Cup game. Expectations are high. But they are all amateurs at the World Cup tournament football. Most of them play for the very first time. I think in defense, Salisu was good. Amate as well, along with Jiku. They were all stoic. At least, at least it was better. For both of, most of them were good in the first half. I think it was great performance from them until the second half. Everything unraveled. Up front, Inyake Williams sometimes a bit isolated. Reason why I want Inyake partnered. And... Uh, I did not like his isolation. It did not help his game at all. So Inaki having a partner would help a lot going forward. I think Jordan Ayu came on and was dispossessed a couple of times and Ghana considered two goals. I don't know why Jordan was being played in midfield. A lot of these things need to be nipped in the bud and also needs to check it correctly. Aside that, I was impressed with the first half performance, impressed with how we played. Kudus Mohamed, uh, the creative spark in the team, having better chances, holding on to the ball a bit too long again. Andre Ayu, lethargic, especially getting the second half until his goal came. Should have been on a bit before being substituted. I think all in all, the players will be happy with the performance. We need to build on this and beat South Korea and uh, move on through this group. A fair way to lose, but it happens. And that is it for today. The players have had their recovery training session. They will rest and go again tomorrow. As time is not on our side, we need to move on from this and get all three points. Who impressed you in the game? What do you need, think needs to change for Tuaru? And how can Ghana beat South Korea? Let me know your thoughts in the comments box. I'll see you guys in the next one. Enjoy your day.